What's up, everybody? Um, I hope everybody's day is starting out good and you guys are looking to a good, strong, productive uh, and short week, hopefully. Um, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to ContractFortune.com. That way you can become a part of uh, the Contract Fortune family and be updated on all the events and educational opportunities that are on the site. They're ready to be taken advantage of. What is a war dog? Um, a lot of people have seen the movie War Dogs, right? With Jonah Hill and um, Miles, Miles Teller, I think. It was a really good movie. A lot of that stuff is true. A lot of that stuff is true. A lot of it skips what the processes are, but what you saw in terms of the process of looking for a solicitation and, you know, bidding on a solicitation and the funny stuff that happens while you're contracting, a lot of that was, 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 was true. And a war dog is supposed to be a derogatory term that describes a government contractor. It's supposed to describe us as war profiteers um, that make money off of, you know, a war or arms dealers. And um, but that's not all a war dog is. It's not necessarily geared just towards war. Um, government contractors do jobs that the average person probably would not want to do or uh, is not able to do. For instance, with me and logistics, if a natural disaster happens, let's say wildfire, tornado, hurricane, any natural disaster, there's certain things that need to happen as soon as the disaster is over. Now, depending on how bad this, the severity of the situation, the military is going to go in and take over a lot of it uh, just to get it, you know, under control and managed. But as soon as they finish their job, they will start putting out solicitations and contracts for for people like me. Um, to give you an example, when Katrina, Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans, right? I was working in a subcontractor position. I wasn't a prime contractor, but they were taking trailers. This was probably about maybe three, four weeks after the uh, actual you know disaster happened. And they were taking trailers down because so many people had lost their homes. And we were taking trailers out of Maryland down to New Orleans. And, you know, that was where people were living after after the hurricane. Now, because of the sense of urgency for how bad they needed these trailers, what is normally, you know, at best, I don't know what today's fuel price is, probably about a, I'm going to say about a $3,000 run, was now a $6,000 run. And that's for me as a subcontractor. So I'm getting $6,000. I can only imagine what the uh, the prime contractor, who was a friend of mine, what he was getting because he was taking some out of each load that he was given. It's easy for you to make anywhere from 200000 to a couple million dollars in a natural disaster. I'll give you another example. When... Hurricane Dorian hit in 2019. There was a contract put out for, and I talk about this often. We didn't, we we won it, but they canceled it because Dorian, you know, skirted the coast. But they put a contract up at an odd hour at night, and it was to set up a base camp for the FEMA workers who were going to be helping, you know, the victims of Dorian had Dorian hit, and they needed some place to have a base camp so that they could come back to every night. Um, we had to set up trailers, you know, all sorts of stuff to make, you know, the place a home for these FEMA workers that will be working, you know, after the hurricane hit. That contract was worth nine point five million dollars. But because Dorian skirted the the coast, it never, you know, the, the contract was never needed. So we're they say that we're profiteers off of natural disasters and wars and things of that nature, but a lot of times, you know, we as civilians respect our men and women in uniform. Um, they take a lot. They're putting their lives on the line for the for the protection of their family as well as the protection of the country. And, you know, I don't know. You know, I can't really go talk about, you know, their pay scale or pay rate. But I know that as a contract, you're coming in and, you know, you're quadrupling what it is that a soldier would make. So a lot of times, you know, I mean, just anybody, you wouldn't, you know, people get upset with that. And but. Most contractors come from a space of just being business businessmen and women, and they're just doing their job. So we're looked down upon, but 
I mean, you're making your money. So, uh, you know, I, I really, you know, I, that, that, I guess that's the give and take of it all. And I really don't look at it as a derogatory term anyway. Like, you can call me a war dog if you want to. But, uh, you know, I know I'm here to do a job. I'm here to get paid for that job. And I know I'm being compensated quite well for that job. And, but you have to be as a contractor also and as a war dog, you have to have certain, you know, I guess cognitive skills. You got to be able to think on your feet. You got to be able to, I mean, it's, it's a businesswoman and businessman's uh, environment because you're dealing with the military, you're dealing with procurement officers, you're dealing with people in charge and those that have power over, you know, the purse strings. And you need to be knowledgeable of whatever it is that you're doing. You need to be knowledgeable of the job that you're being asked to do. You have to be able to think on your feet a lot of times. And this is what comes with being uh, a, a contractor as well, being able to make an adjustment because the procurement officer will give you an adjustment right then and there. They'll say, um, you know, we want a, a, a black tank and you've already went and bought a brown tank. And they're like, nah, we want a black tank. And, and, and you have to go find this black tank right then and there or they will cancel the contract on you. Now, certain situations, they'll cancel you for cause. Check this out. I, and we talk about this during the um, during the class uh, when you you know when you take the class we talk about this particular situation. There was a company I'm not going to name them on this video, but it's, it's named in the class. And their job was to ship tarps like the blue tarps that go over the houses in Puerto Rico, right? When that, when Hurricane Maria hit, these tarps would have cover because people lost roofs on their homes, so they needed these tarps to keep the water out. And they were given like a, I want to say 21.2 or 22.2 million dollar contract to make sure that these tarps were making it to the island. Well, a lot of times uh, dudes or folks will see those dollar signs and they will see those numbers and they'll get excited, you know, and, and you, yeah, I would be excited too to know that I'm getting ready to make 22.2 million dollars. But at the same time, I never think about the money first. I think about the job first. I think about the fact that right now there's a procurement officer who's waiting for me to complete this job in order for them to complete whatever it is that they need to do. So the job comes first. And as a war dog or a contractor, whatever you want to you know, call it, sure, you're getting paid these you know, large sums of money to do this job. But you still have to be good at, at your job. You have to be able to say, all right, this is what I'm getting paid. This is potentially what I might be getting paid. But this job needs to be done first. We'll think about the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow after we complete the job. And that's how I always have conducted myself as a contractor. So I've been able to have success as a contractor. Again, I'm very proud of our capability statement. And if you go to the website, you'll see our capability statement, Apex, that is Apex uh, Global Logistics. You'll see the capability statement listed on the um, on the on the website. But again, you have to have the ability as a contractor to think on your feet. You have to have the ability to, uh, if they tell you something, make the adjustment. And that's not for everybody. That's just not for everybody. Don't get caught up in the numbers part of it first. But to go back to, because I'm, I'm jumping all over the place, to go back to what it was that I was telling you about this company, they were supposed to ship $22.2 million worth of tarps over to Puerto Rico. They ended up shipping, I think, roughly a couple of million dollars worth of these tarps over to uh, PR. And keep in mind, they already spent the money because you have to spend the money first and, and take care of the job first. But they spent the money on, you know, the, these things and didn't complete the job. And... They got canceled for cause because they didn't complete the job. Now, the, the thing about it is, depending on the severity of whatever the job is, you can get canceled for cause most of the time because you did something severe. A lot of times they'll cancel you for no cause. If, if you go to the procurement officer and you know you're not going to be able to do the job and you you know give everybody a heads up, they'll work with you. And, and I think I've built a, a, a good enough rapport with uh, a lot of the procurement officers I work with that they've been able to you know, cut me some slack on certain things. That's not to say they all, all were happy with me, but I've never, thank God, been canceled for cause. But 
these people in Puerto Rico were waiting for these tarps to cover their homes. There's water coming into their houses. The military is, you know, the U.S. military is responsible to help these people bring their lives to some sort of organ organization after this storm, after this weather event. And for these guys to have fumbled the ball on what it was that they were supposed to do, they got canceled for cause. That's bad. You know what I mean? There's no other way to sum that up. It's very bad. That's a bad, bad, bad thing. It's a very bad blemish on your company name. So for as much as the money comes into play when you're thinking about all of, of being a contractor, you also have to be aware that you have a job to do. So, I mean, most of the folks that are businessmen and women that are trying to establish a business uh, getting started, they're already aware of how on point they have to be in order to establish that business. I guess being a contractor, you have to be that much more on point. So anyway, that that that's the story of, you know, this particular company that was supposed to send tarps over to PR. Again, don't get caught up in the money. Just stay focused on the job. Stay focused on what it is that you're doing. And you'll be able to travel the world with things. I've traveled the world contracting. I've been around this world contract. I've been to remote places because you have to remember there are U.S. embassies and military bases uh, all over the world. And all of these places are United States soil. So they might need something. They'll send an order request to, you know, whatever the agency is in D.C. where the main property headquarters is. And they put the solicitation out and you bid on it. And if you win, the, if you win, if you have to send an item to this particular, let's just say it's a military base in some far off remote place. D.C. is not going to, you know, Washington, D.C., they just want you to ship the equipment. The people at the base are who you're really working with and, and, and trying to assist in what it is that they're doing. So you end up traveling to these places because, as I tell you all the time, on-site visits and being a part of the operation and being there for the procurement officers uh, to, to talk to you, ask any questions if they need any help or they got anything that they need, you know, you're there to help. You get to travel to these places. It's an adventure. It really is an adventure. Um, I've, it's been an educational adventure for me. I've crossed off a lot of countries on my bucket list. And, you know, I've made a, a ton of money in the process of traveling to all these places. So that's a little bit about what a war dog is and, you know, getting to travel the world, doing something that you love. Like I love I love contracting. Um, it, 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 it can get mentally exhausting because you're doing so much. But I love contracting and it makes it so that you get to live a life and have an adventure that, again, that the average person is not living. So like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and subscribe to ContractFortune.com. I hope everyone has a productive week and I will talk to you later.